Hello, so we are here because we have a problem. There are people who have amazing solutions to offer, um, whether it's their brain power, skills, a product, and their solutions aren't getting to the people who need them the most. And this can be for a lot of reasons. Sometimes somebody might be new to B2B sales or enterprise sales or new to the healthcare industry or a bit of both. And I just wanted to share some um, tips that might help you get further along in the sales process. Um, in a little context, my name is Amelia. I'm the owner of Solutions by Amelia, and I'm a registered nurse by trade, been in healthcare for over 10 years, and I'm also a business owner. I've been in B2B sales for um, the past three to four years. Most recently, I had a client that was a Fortune 200 company. So when it comes to um, enterprise sales, B2B sales, and I was the first um, sales I was a consultant, not necessarily a hire for a company right before they got their VP of sales and it was a healthcare startup. So um, I'm familiar with healthcare. I'm familiar with sales and I wanted to share some tips um, shared simply that might support you in getting along um, quicker and faster and easier in your journey. So we're at MedStack and this was a LinkedIn post and I just wanted to share some context besides jumping right in before just jumping right into um, sales pipeline um, talk. but somebody that I knew tagged me in this post, right? And so this is what it is. This is best practice. Um, and I'm all about sharing best practice. Again, as a healthcare expert, I don't just share information because I saw it on a webinar someplace and the person sharing it seemed nice. I like sharing stuff that's actually based in things that work in real life and best um, best practice scenarios. So this is MedStack. I'm not affiliated with them at all. Um, but this is a post that really clearly talks to their ideal buyer and customer in a way that engaged to over almost 300 people to react to this in some way. And even it's a lot of these reactions were people tagging other people. And this is, again, is on LinkedIn. So um, let's just look over this. Um, and this isn't even an a sponsored ad or anything. This is just came up in my feed. Somebody who knows about the problem that I solve tagged me here. They said they saw this, they thought of me because again, I work with um, startup founders who want to um, get known in their industry, whether it's the healthcare industry or something else. They really want to tell the story of why their work matters to the world. And um, they're struggling with articulating their unique value, standing out from other people who do similar things and connecting with the right people. So um, MedStack, let's just read through it. The need for digital services has never been more pressing. This must watch webinar for health, um, digital health startups covers all the basics you need to um, confidently sell and scale. In this free webinar, you will learn what protected health information is, why it matters, how protection is enforced, what the impacts on commercialization, um, what, what the impact is on commercialization of your product, how to be compliant with the privacy and security regulations, and how um, successfully to sell your digital healthcare products. So this is MedStack. They serve a similar group of folks in a different way that I do. Um, and maybe I'd love to collaborate with them in one day because um, I know about HIPAA regulations. Um, my first um, corporate or first consulting role was with a HIPAA compliance solution. We consulted with companies who um, either didn't have a HIPAA compliance solution or they wanted to get more visible, but they knew that they needed to um, have a dedicated person caring to ensure that they maintained a state of HIPAA compliance. And HIPAA compliance is a state of being. It's software, it's tech, and it's behavior. It's all of that. So um, in any case, that's the problem that I solve. And people know that and they know that I love helping startup founders be successful and get wins. And when it comes to showing up and being visible, especially in the healthcare world, we do have to have a conversation about HIPAA. So in any case, it looks like they are um, attracting a similar group of people, but they're offering a different um, level of service. Maybe they help you with the technical side. Um, but in any case, I don't quite know. But long story short, um, they clearly are showing that they're here to solve a specific problem. HIPAA 101 for startups, basic, right? And this is what their um, their caption is, HIPAA 101 webinar for digital um, health startups, watch now. And so again, lots of people liked it. A lot of these comments were tagged and um, 
and people replying to that. But in any case, so what can you take away? So clearly show the specific problem that you solve for your ideal client. Um, how are you helping them win the day? There is a great example that's called the job to be done theory. Google job to be done and milkshakes. And um, how are you showing that you will help your ideal client win their day? So let's get into the sales pipeline because um, this key to any successful business of any scale is having um, a pipeline that has a good amount of leads coming in that are being moved through a specific sales process and you're closing deals on a regular basis. And there's lots of ways to explain the sales process. Lots of people have different ways. Um, I want to almost say they all work. As long as you have a process, you can have something to measure. Um, just like vital signs, you have vital signs that you can measure and see if it, if the person and if the system, if the process, if the business is healthy um, by way of measurements. That's how we can determine health. That's how I determine health. That's all I know how to determine health is by um, having a measurement. That's my background. Again, I'm in healthcare. Um, you might come from a different background and you have another way of measuring health. And if that's been working, continue to do that. Great. Um, so your sales pipeline. Um, prospecting is simply um, finding uh, people that you might be able to do business with. And this is prospecting gold for me, right? All of these almost 200 people who would be interested in um, HIPAA 101 for um, a startup, they may also have um, questions about messaging, about articulating your, their unique value, about talking about their value proposition, about telling their story, about getting known in their industry and developing a reputation. These almost 300 people are leads for me. So that friend that knows the problem that I solve, knows who I like to connect with, tag me in this post and um, and also sent me a LinkedIn message that says, hey, I saw this and thought of you. Um, she knows my ideal folks. So these are really almost 300 leads that I could be actively working if I wanted to, right? So that's another great thing. When you have a clear message, you'll have an a, a army of people who are seeing opportunities and tagging you in them that says, hey, you know what? You need to look here. Your people are over here. Um, you know, take a look at the people who've engaged in this, connect with this company, follow them, show up on their webinar, answer questions in their community and, and whatnot. But in any case, back to sales pipeline, prospecting, finding future customers with a problem you can solve and develop a relationship with them. So it, it can look like this. It can look like a lot of things. Lead source. Um, it's really great to have a constant flow. Where is your lead source? Could it be a LinkedIn post? Yes. Um, could it be a podcast? Um, Yes. Could it be a community um, of people who um, are getting a particular problem answered in a Facebook group or LinkedIn group or on a webinar or in a podcaster's community? Yes, it can be all of those things. Could it be Facebook ads? Could it be um, Google ads? Um, yes, it could be all of those things. But pick a lead source or two, um, stick with it so you can measure it instead of, um, you know, jumping all over the place and having a whole bunch of lead sources. You're not really quite sure where your best leads are coming in. Um, considerations, your conversion rate and your sales cycle and healthcare sales cycles can typically be longer and you can absolutely shorten that by way of a few things. I like referrals by design and strategic partnerships by design. That's an entire process that I could talk about on a different, um, I guess, video. But in any case, you can absolutely shorten that sales cycle. Um, research, you know, what are they talking about? Um, what's important for them to know? And let me just pause this one second. Okay, so what's um, what are they talking about? What's important to them and how can you empower them to win their day? Um, also going back to um, a messaging framework, um, when you are telling the story of why your work matters to the world, it really matters that you have a framework that is interesting and brings people into a story that they're interested in and they want to continue with you on the story. And there's lots of frameworks out there. There's one in particular I like, but again, I have other videos about that. Um, and if you want a link to that, just let me know somehow. Um, qualification, do they have a budget? Are they motivated? And do they have an authority to buy? So you might say, you know, I'm new to healthcare. How do I find out, you know, who has a budget and who not, who does not? There's 
tons of ways to find that out. A very simple way, I'm going to reference you to a place. In fact, let me pause here and go get that resource. So this is one of the many information sources that would make sense for you to have someone on your team who is um, staying up to date with what's going on in the healthcare industry. There's lots of ways to do that, lots of um, channels to stay tuned into. Um, I'm not going to say one channel is better than another um, because, again, they all work. Um, but it, however you're tuning into it, um, this will tell you who literally has money. Um, so let me click over here. for. So this is their news. Um, this is news. Sometimes they talk about, you know, who recently got a different, a new round of funding. Um, this is also good to sign up here because, you know, they'll give you a weekly um, update on, you know, who got what. Let's go back to an update from March um, 2020. So these are some of the headlines. So um, recent funding, boom, here you are. There's a high chance that there are um, these are companies that have budget of some sort to solve a problem. Um, another way to find you know who has a budget is to see what they're hiring for. So go through to these companies, see what they're literally hiring for. Go to Indeed, go to Angel, um, see what they're hiring for. There, there's tons of ways to find out what companies um, are actually paying for and if they have budget. Um, motivation and authority, you know, are you talking to the right person? And you also can get that information through a job posting. Um, and if you, again, need support with that, feel free to reach out. Follow up, follow up and nurture qualified leads after they've been qualified. You don't want to, of course, spend time with people who aren't a great fit. Um, after you realize that they're qualified, um, lots of things you can do. Um, long story short, I see lots of people not follow up. Sometimes they're just happy that they found somebody who has a problem that they can help them with, that has a budget, that seems motivated. And sometimes people can just get, get happy because of that and then stop. It makes sense to follow up and nurture and um, have a defined and documented cadence, um, a way of reaching out. I like Basho. I like Dream 100. Those are both things that you can absolutely research to get more information about. Um, build a relationship where they are. Um, it's 2021. The world hasn't quite opened up just yet. Um, however, social selling is an absolute thing. Closing sales over on, on via social media or via Slack is actually happening now in real life. Um, it happened pre-COVID, post-COVID. That's just where people are, especially people of a certain age group. Um, and you might say that your decision makers are not on social media. You know, they're not on Slack. Um just by way of reminder, the oldest millennial is pushing 40. So there's a high chance that your decision makers, um, person who is controlling budget, people who are leading decisions, um, they're digital natives. Um, that's just a fact of life. Um, direct mail, telling a story. Tell You can easily also tell a four-part, three-part story via direct mail. Again, that's a kickback to the Dream 100 strategy from the book, The Ultimate Sales Machine. Um, and read the book. It's great. And if you need support with implementing it, um, please think of me. Decision-making content. Maybe they just need help and support making a decision. Maybe they, um, and that I've been in that when I've done um, sales for enterprise level companies, um, sometimes, especially in healthcare, they just want proof that this works for someone else. They don't want to be the first one out there flapping in the wind with a, with a new solution. Um, they want to know who else who does, has this work for. So they want to see a case study. And if you got the case study by way of a plot pilot, or maybe it was like a smaller project with a lesser known company, um, they just really want to know, has it worked for somebody? And you can display this by way of a one pager or a landing page or a blog post or even a webinar. There's lots of ways, you know, you can choose to do it, but it really does make sense for whatever um, decision-making content you have your marketing team develop. Make sure that they're following a consistent story. Make sure that the story that's being told over the webinar is the same story that the landing page is telling. That's the same story that the um, blog post tells. That's the same story of the case studies or one pagers. And how do you do that? You do it by having a messaging framework. There's lots of frameworks out there. But after that, make a small commitment. That commitment, invite them to make a small commitment. Um, as you study sales, you'll hear about the idea of having a series of yeses, um, getting your future customer to make to say yes. 
um, because people, we like to be consistent. If we said yes to a first meeting, we most likely will say yes to a second meeting. And if we can also say yes to being shown um, a demo, um, we're typically, we like to be consistent. So get a small commitment that they can say yes to. Is it reviewing material and then meeting you back so that you can see what they thought about that thing that they reviewed? It could look like that. Um, invitation to a meeting. And again, this is just a sample um, sales pipeline. You may skip steps. You may not have some of these steps. I just wanted to give you examples of what a sales process looks like um, based on what I've seen work in real life and what other people have also done. Um, invitation to a meeting and then close one. Um, it's just really good to um, track. Of course, you can measure you know, the number of meetings that have ended up in a win or a loss. That's just give you, that just gives you data points to make decisions moving forward. And then after you've won and after you've lost, especially when you're just starting out, have a recap meeting of what worked and why it worked. Um, sometimes after you get a win, it can be so easy to just be happy and excited and that nobody's really paying attention to what worked so that we can replicate and duplicate success. Um, and um, stronger commitment may be down the line. Um, offboarding and then referral partner, raving fan, um, you know, putting them into that pipeline. Project plan. So a project plans are super important. Um, I have a couple of videos. Um, if you were to go back, I think it related to project marketing management about project plans. Um, but when it comes to finding your affiliates or strategic partners or channel partners or clients or referral partners, there's a specific process. It looks like finding them. Where are they? They're everywhere. They're all around us. They're gathered around things that are interested, interesting to them. They might all be here, right? Depending on what I have, these um, almost 300 people, they might be great referral partners. They might be great strategic partners, clients or whatnot, but they're, they're everywhere. Um, reach out, reach out, get a yes. That yes could look like a yes to a first meeting, second meeting, a various things. It could look like, hey, you know, I'd like to invite you onto my platform. I have professional water cooler chats um, on LinkedIn. I have water cooler chats with people who are doing interesting things. Um, are these water cooler chats with people that I want to work with? Not necessarily. Sometimes they're with people that I think might be interesting. Are they interesting for another professional associate? Are they interesting for future collaboration? Are they interesting for a potential client? Are they interesting for a potential client of mine? Um, and so I know I like matchmaking. So when I said a match for one of my clients, that's sort of what I meant. But are they a match for um, uh, a referral partnership, right? You know, would, could they send me people? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I typically get a good idea after I have a conversation with them and why not have a conversation with them um, and get to know them in a way that other people can also get to know them too. Um, because I, I have a good, I guess it might, might be my nurse spidey sense. I have a good um, idea of being able to tell um, lots of stuff about people um, rather quickly. It's a gift. Don't know how to translate it to other people. Um, but that's that. Any case, get a yes. Perform on whatever you said that you're going to perform on, offboard, nurture, optimize, and repeat. So whatever you get out of this, I really, really, really do want you to know where all of your opportunities are at a glance. You do this by um, getting a pipeline tool of some sort. There's lots of them out there. A spreadsheet, Excel, Trello, Asana, um, Pipedrive, um, all work. Um, Salesforce is extremely robust. HubSpot is extremely robust. Um, and it really makes sense to automate automate a system that works. So it really makes sense to try this out in Trello, Asana, Pipedrive, um, optimize it, and then amplify a process that works because you absolutely can ampl amplify and automate noise and chaos. That is absolutely something that can happen. Wanted to keep this under 20 minutes, so I'll stop here. My name is Amelia, owner of Solutions by Amelia. Let's connect and we can keep the conversation going.